Welcome to the Global Missions Podcast, a program for Christ followers who want to participate more effectively in God's work, both at home and to the ends of the earth. Visit us at globalmissionspodcast.com to find show notes, resources, and previous episodes, or to suggest a particular topic or guest you would like to hear featured on the program. You can also engage with us through Twitter and Facebook. We would love to hear from you. And now, here's your host, Rob Magwood, better known to his friends as Mags. Hi, everyone, and welcome back for this episode of the Global Missions Podcast. Today, we are going to be talking about another really important topic, caring for our missionary families as they engage transition. We're joined by Becky Michalis, who has deep personal and professional experience in walking alongside families serving in missions and churches who want to support those families. Before we get to the interview, we'd like to share with you this missions resource. Are you looking to mobilize your church for global missions? Start by taking the Perspectives course. This course will give you a better understanding of the historical, biblical, cultural, and strategic aspect of missions. Visit www.perspectivescourse.org today to find a course near you. And now, here's today's interview. Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome to this episode and this interview of the Global Missions Podcast. Our guest today is Becky Michellis. Becky works for Outreach Canada as a mission family resilience coach. She has been coaching mission workers, including singles and couples and families, for 15 years now, helping them to successfully navigate transitions and loss and crises and repatriation, moving back to their homeland. Becky herself grew up as an MK, a missionary kid, in three different countries and has now lived and ministered in missions as an adult in Cambodia, in Indonesia, Kuwait, and in Canada. She and her husband have raised four third culture kids. And so her experience in helping family transition is not only professional, but something that she has done personally as well. Becky, we're glad to have you and welcome to the program. Thank you. It's great to be here. Well, if we could just begin by you sharing a little bit about yourself and how you came to be passionate about helping mission workers navigate through transition. Sure. Well, I was born as a uh, missionary kid in Malaysia, and so the life of being uh, a missionary family was very normal for me. Through my growing up years, it wasn't just Malaysia, but I also uh, went and lived in Canada as well as Hong Kong. And interestingly enough, um, had lots of transition growing up and going to school in a Canadian public school, a British boarding school, and an an American uh, international school. Yeah, then in my late teens, when I repatriated or came back to Canada to live and stay, I remember really wanting to just say, you know what, I'm kind of done with this. I want to find someone that I can marry and settle down with and live the rest of my life here in Canada. But it didn't take long to realize that that really wasn't the life for me. Mm. I didn't fit in that well. Um and, and others around, my friends didn't feel that, and they would never have said that. But for me, it was just a sense inwardly that I missed living overseas. There was this sense of restlessness in my heart that kept drawing me back to the peoples of the world and their need to know Jesus. So after my husband and I were involved in church planting, we ended up going with a mission organization to Indonesia. We went thinking that we would be career missionaries, and um, God had other plans for us. We had real challenges at that time with our visas. Mm. And so, yeah, kind of that even the four years that we were there, one year in language school, two years in an urban church planting situation, and then the last year, actually, something we never thought would be part of the plan was to actually be dorm parents in a missionary kid boarding school. So, yeah, lots of things going on. And then as an adult, you already mentioned, we uh, also went to Cambodia and headed up an international church pastorate in Phnom Penh. Mm. And about six years ago, we're in Kuwait, again, thinking that we'd be there for a long amount of time. And because of a, a family 
crisis, we came back to Canada within Mm -hmm. about a year. Mm -hmm. Wow. What a rich experience you bring uh, to this discussion then. And from talking with you before we started recording, I know that you have a caring heart already for, uh, for God's workers. Becky, I want to spend just a few minutes talking about terms for our listeners and defining some terms. Mm -hmm. Um, For for those in our audience, we don't want to assume that you know the abbreviations that we use and so forth. So MK is one of them. MK, and what do we mean, Becky? That stands for missionary kid. Right. Okay. And TCK. That is third culture kid. So a third culture kid is someone who has in their developmental years, growing up in a culture differently than their parents' home culture. So obviously, MKs or missionary kids fit into that category. Right, a subset of TCKs. TCKs could be in another field. Their parents could be working in a different type of work or something. And then the difference between these two terms, change and transition. Will you take just a minute and unpack what we mean by those, and then we'll get into the discussion. Change is a move from one situation to another. It is external, whereas transition is our emotional or psychological um, reaction or the process that we go through inwardly to come to grips with that change. So it's... um, Yeah, it it happens actually in both positive and negative change. We often think of transition more or equate it more in a hard situation or a hard change just because there's more negative reactions or, uh, yeah, just coming to grips with it is more difficult. But really, it happens in both positive and more challenging change. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, that lays some of the terms out so that as we go through this discussion, uh, listeners uh, will understand what we mean by these terms. Becky, you serve as a life coach and you focus on helping mission families through the many transitions that they face. Would you please just take a minute and describe for us something of a, a typical, if there is a typical journey of a missionary family and some of the transitions that those families face? Sure. And I've kind of taken the transition journey. Remember the psychological coming to grips with the change that they face Mm -hmm. going abroad and living amongst a different people group um, in four different categories. So the calling, the chaos, the crisis, and then the contentment. Mm -hmm. Um, Initially, yeah, God calls missionary families and it's a sense of um, euphoria in this calling. It's a sense of Nothing is impossible with God. And that call always compels. It compels the family to be moved into a place of chaos. Mm -hmm. And chaos is all about uh, getting ready and then going overseas because there's so much change involved. There's the change of routine, of support systems. There's um, the change of a new environment and new culture, all very different from what they're used to. All of that change initially is actually quite fun and exciting. Not quite. It is really exciting. And sure. and you talk to missionaries, families that go, and there's just this excitement of anticipation. And, and once you get there, the excitement of everything new and um, There's exploration and settling in, and um, we call it really the honeymoon stage. That's exactly the term I was going to use. We used to call it, you know, the honeymoon phase, which varied how long that honeymoon phase lasted, varied broadly between families, of course. But it was new and and generally exciting and novel, and and that can come to a conclusion. It does, which leads to... The crisis stage and the crisis stage is really more around um, when culture shock starts to hit. So this is where these um, more negative emotions tend to come in for transition. So there's frustration, there's um, irritation, even hostility. Sometimes I remember when I was uh, in Indonesia and I was learning the language and the ways and customs. And one of the things that they would always say to me is, um, you know, good afternoon, Becky, you look fat today. And I think, what? Come on, you know? And and really, what I had to realize was in their culture, 
looking fat meant prospering Mm -hmm. and meant that you're being well cared for by your husband. So Mm -hmm. little things like that can be such an irritation. Mm -hmm. So crisis is just a sense. I mean, it goes beyond just irritation. There's can be anger and fear. There can be questioning God. Like, did I actually hear the call? Right. Um, Why am I here? I, I, Again, uh, I remember when we were in Cambodia thinking, oh, if someone just gave me a ticket, an airplane ticket, I would be out of here. Mm -hmm. So crisis is a difficult time. Uh, And yet as we push through and trust God uh, with his promises and with a place of adaptation, we do get to this place of contentment. Mm -hmm. It's really about acceptance and, and what we call a new normal And it's a really great place because God is working in us terrifically. And there's new insights that come and and, and new character that's built and developed. And obviously within the culture itself, there's new relationships and a new support system that's developed. It it is a, a good place to be as you learn the language as a missionary and God uses you no matter what. You know, it crosses my mind to ask, is it necessary that every missionary family go through crisis? You know, I think everyone does go through crisis, but the way they are able to cope and react and act within it is different. Mm -hmm. So every every family is so unique. Mm -hmm. And there are times when a family can at this particular time in their missionary career go through a transition and barely feel it at all. So the transition doesn't go deep for them. They just kind of skim the surface and keep going. Uh, And there are other times, depending on the variables in the transition, where it could be a very hard transition. So you see varying things. And 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 I I will say that most families, when they're given time and support, have absolutely no problem going through a transition. It's It's an exciting thing. God does amazing things in us through transition. The other thing that that happens is that there are individuals within the family. So sometimes, you know, you have a family of five, four out of five do really well, and one member of the family doesn't do well. So Mm. that can make a difference in the whole family dynamic and what's going on as well. Well, by saying everyone's different, we acknowledge that there are uh, single missionaries, both men and women who serve and face transition. And then there are those that are in family units, uh, broader family units, married. Are there particular points of transition that affect parents? Mm. I can think of several, and this is really all across the board, is that as a parent, often your main focus is around your children. And so knowing that their children could be having a hard time during transition or wondering how they're going to get through transition can be a big concern for a parent. The the other challenging thing is that the parent is facing this transition themselves. So they're uh, trying to cope with their own sense of disequilibrium and yet lead their children through at the same time. So um, it, it can be a, a little bit of a challenge at times. And now if we think about children, are there some parts of transition that are particularly impacting on kids? I think there are two areas that are hardest for the missionary kid. One is that they never quite feel like they belong. So that when they're in the, what we call the host or adopted country. Mm -hmm. That's the culture where their family goes to minister. Um, You know, they know the language. They probably feel like they fit best there because they are very integrated. And yet they realize that they're still a foreigner and they're not a native in that Mm -hmm. area. Um, And then when they come back here to Canada for home assignment, they really don't fit in here, even though they look Canadian and people assume that they have a good concept of what the culture is, um, often there's nuances because culture goes so deep, uh, not just behavior, but really values and and belief systems. And so it can be 
difficult or it can at least be a challenge in that area. Uh, And then as you look at not fitting into one or another, as they get older, they struggle then with who they are as a person. So their identity struggles. Um, And it, you know, I want to say that when everything is said and done, their life is one of amazing experiences Mm -hmm. and travel. And it all integrates once they become an adult and get through some of this stuff to have very positive um, outcomes. But as they're going through the developmental years and into their young um, adulthood, it can be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Our family Uh, had the opportunity to serve in the former Soviet Union. And Mm. when we moved home with our two younger boys, uh, very understandably, uh, people in our home church would say, well, boys, are you glad to be back home? And these two young boys would kind of look at each other and say, well, we really like Canada, but we're not home, (laughs) are we? (laughs) And so it's this is helpful just to sensitize us to those who now live on in ascending nation, in the home nation, that uh, for these dear young kids, sometimes there's an in-between. That's why they're called third culture kids. They're in between these two places. I wonder if there are particularly stressful aspects that you observe generally churches might not know about or were not uh, sensitive enough to. Yeah, I think one you've already mentioned, and that's coming home for home assignment. You know, there's excitement and joy and anticipation getting to see extended family and friends again. There's the church situation. There's, I mean, I remember coming home as a missionary kid, and there were these four distinct seasons, which was so refreshing. Of course, Mm -hmm. the amazing food that's back here. Um, I came from Asia, so just having people obey the rules of the road, it was great. Just so much of that sort of thing. However, the transition can be challenging. As we mentioned, for missionary kids, it's not, it doesn't feel like home. So they've got the transition to new friends, uh, new school, new surroundings, and that can be really challenging. Um, another situation that I faced both growing up as well as being a missionary was redeployment. And so sometimes, um, Depending on what's going on and the mission strategy and all that, you may be asked as a missionary family to head someplace else. Uh, And again, you have to make that transition all uh, deeply all over again. Um, And there are also losses that are often not recognizable. I, I find working with missionaries and families in the last years or these most recent years, one of the things that is really starting to happen is that as we push uh, further into unreached people groups of the world, the mission fields are becoming harder and more hostile. Mm -hmm. And so one of the greatest losses for these families is the loss of what I would call security. So the safety factor in living in these places um, is not always there. And so the sense of sacrifice, as well as the sense of how do I keep my family safe, um, can be a real uh, stress and strain on the Mm -hmm. family. Becky, how do missionary families change while they are away overseas? And how does this impact their transition back to their home country when they return? I think they change in very significant ways. You know, when you're um, put into a place where you are challenged to the core, your very fabric of being is transformed. I, I think their faith is challenged as they grow. I think they become closer as a family because really they become the one constant in each other's lives. Um, they see God's miracles. And I know both growing up as well as being a missionary, being able to see as a family so many miracles and trust God for miracles. Uh, There's a lot of amazing adventures. There's travel. Um, You see both the poverty in a land as well as a culture that is rich. And, And so you've got both 
positive and challenges that, yeah, I mean, it just totally um, rocks the world of a missionary and a missionary kid. So coming back, it can be um, a real time of, yeah, oh, who am I now, right? Because what happens is the church and people back here tend to think that they are going to be the same as when they left, right? But they have changed, and they don't even really know how they've changed. Um, One of the things that I will mention, too, is that there can be really hard things. There can be traumatizing things. There can be circumstances that leave them uh, exhausted, maybe stressed or even to the place of burnout. Mm -hmm. They can feel disillusionment towards God or their organization. And so a lot of that is very hard to process when they're overseas uh, on the mission field because they're just, I I, I picture it like um, being on the front lines as in a soldier being there and really they are just there to do the frontline work. And so it is really that time of coming home and having R and R to be able to process a a lot of what goes on as Mm -hmm. well as just rejuvenate and rest and um, recall the goodness of the Lord as well as some of those hard things. Mm -hmm. Well, it leads us to a great discussion of what home service or furlough home assignment can and should be for these workers Becky, I'd like to go toward that direction and Mm -hmm. imagine in our audience that there are going to be local churches who have mission workers somewhere out in the world, and they do want to do a great job of supporting those workers. And maybe that happens particularly at that furlough time or home service time. How can a local church that wants to be supportive to missionaries step forward into this caring mode? What advice do you have for them? Uh, There's so many ways, so many practical ways. Uh, Some of the things that I can think of is, number one, give time and space for the missionary family. I think letting them know that you know they need time to process and to perhaps grieve or, or take time to just go through the story of the last, whatever, two, three, four years. Um, I think uh, debriefing is really wonderful if they've got a church that will debrief them. That really helps. Uh, If not debriefing within the church, there are professionals that do that too, and that could be offered to them. Besides debriefing and, and giving them time and space, another thing is really just to be there, to be there to um, listen and to ask questions. Obviously, trust needs to be built, but, you know, beyond, oh, how's it going and listening for a quick answer to this place of asking some heart-to-heart questions. Uh, You know, how is your heart? What transition are you currently facing and how is it affecting you? How is it affecting you spiritually, emotionally, physically, relationally, mentally? really taking time to listen. And I want to suggest that when the leaders of the church, whether it's pastors or elders, take time to do this, it really is, um, well, it really shows the missionary family that they uh, are cared for and, and are important to the whole church. These are some great practical ideas. I'll just insert here for our listeners that we take show notes during these interviews so that what Becky is sharing here is being recorded and you can find that list of questions and ideas on the website. Uh, Becky, what other practical advice do you have, again, for a missions committee or maybe a pastor or even just a caring person in a church? Well, there's always the very practical needs that can be met. So, helping them with finding a house, setting up furniture, getting a car, uh, getting kids registered for school, you know, the professional list of doctors and dentists, all of these things, you know, being away for even a couple years can change so greatly. Uh, So that is really important. I we have a little quip that we say uh, for missionary kids coming back at college age, but this can be so good for families too. And it's it's this, get a mentor to enter. Uh, so to be able to have a 
let's say, another family with kids the same age as the missionary family or someone who cares about the missionary to be like a mentor for them. The missionary can know that they can phone them at any time uh, to get questions answered and that sort of thing can be so very helpful. The other thing that I was going to suggest is, um, you know, often we can see when someone is struggling. Uh, We note it perhaps by their behavior or they're looking like they're struggling in one way or another. And if, if you notice that, with one of the members of the family, I think speaking into it sooner rather than later is a good idea because the sooner you can get, whether it be a debriefing or listening help to, let's say, a counselor or trauma support or help that way, the better it's going to be for the individual in the family. So don't hesitate if you see something to, uh, in a gentle and loving way, just bring it up and and ask the family about it. Well, that means the, uh, building relationship then. To be able to ask those types of questions requires yes. trust and friendship, uh, which is something that uh, churches, home churches, can extend to their missionary yeah, families, of course. Sure. Well, I wonder if we could turn toward resources, Becky. What do you have to recommend to churches or missions committees who want to do their very best to support their workers through transition and loss and change? You know, there's a a new book out since um, summertime, and it's called Mind the Gaps, Engaging the Church in Missionary Care. It's by David Wilson, and he was a mission pastor, and I believe still is for many years. Um, It's a very practical uh, book on helping the church know how to help their missionaries. Uh, On the Canadian MK Network website, Uh, There are global and regional activities that are happening to support both missionary kids as well as the missionary family. So that is a good place to go. Um, And again, part of that involves Reboot, which is a retreat for missionary college age kids. Mm -hmm. One is held in Kitchener and the other is held in Calgary each summer. Um, I cannot more highly recommend it Mm -hmm. to missionary kids that are college age or thereabouts coming home. And then I know that Mission Prep uh, is starting a family re-entry camp in the Toronto area uh, next July. CanadianMK.net is the website for the Canadian MK Network, which is a community of caring professionals uh, helping churches and helping mission families with uh, to help their kids make healthy transitions back into life, uh, in this case, in North America. But if you're listening from North America, there's some great, great resources on that uh, website. Well, Becky, I want to say thank you uh, for helping open this important topic with us. If our listeners wanted to learn more from you, how can they be in touch with you or contact you? Well, I've got a email address, bmichellis at outreach.ca, and I would love to hear from anyone as far as questions, anything like that uh, around the missionary family would be great. Well, thank you for sharing some of your experience personally and your expertise with us today. This has been very helpful, and uh, we appreciate you spending the afternoon with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, we hope you've been encouraged by this episode and have some practical ideas to consider. Let's work together to take great care of our mission's families. And if you've got ideas and suggestions for caring about families in mission, maybe while they're in transition, would you share that with us on our website so that others can benefit from it too? We're all learning together. That's the goal here. And we'll be enriched if we can step forward together. As we record this particular episode, it's early in 2017, and our team has just reached a significant milestone. 20,000 downloads of the podcast. So thanks for being part of this and for listening today. If you've appreciated the program, thanks for helping spread the word. That's all for today. 
The Global Missions Podcast is produced by the Jaffrey Center for Global Initiatives and SEND International of Canada in collaboration with other like-minded agencies. On behalf of our team, thanks for listening. And we invite you to join us again in two weeks when we'll continue to explore the grand adventure of being Christ's witnesses to the ends of the earth.